from Newton's second law, we have the force acting on a body F is equal to the rate of change of momentum of the body. But momentum of a body is always the product of mass of the body into its velocity. If a body of mass m is moving with velocity v, then its momentum will be mass into its velocity. Since this mass is no longer constant, since the particle can travel with the speed of light, it can always change its mass. So, both these mass and velocities are variables. So, you should use the product rule for derivation here. That is, mass of the body into derivative of velocity plus velocity of the body times derivative of mass with respect to time. Call this as equation number one. Also, you have the work done the small work done in a body is always the force, the constant force acting on the body times its displacement, dx. Call this as equation number two. So in the place of force, you can substitute equation one. Therefore, dw is equal to, instead of force, you can write this whole term, that is m dv by dt plus v dm by dt times dx clear therefore dw is equal to you can multiply the dx with each of the terms you get m into dv by dt into dx plus v dm by dt into dx this can also be written as dw is equal to m dv into dx by dt plus v dm into dx by dt. Clear. Therefore, dw is equal to m dv, you know, dx by dt. The rate of change of position of body with respect to time will be its velocity into v plus v dm by dt here here again dx by dt is v therefore dw is equal to you can write the v in here which is equal to mv dv plus v into v is v square v square dm call this as equation number three clear and from the Einstein's relation of the mass of a body compared with the rest mass, we have mass of the body at a velocity is equal to the rest mass divided by root of 1 minus v square by c square. You can take, you can square the bo both the left hand side and the right hand side you will get m square is equal to m0 square by you can you can remove or this root will get cancelled so 1 minus v square by c square squaring will remove the root taking this to the left m square into 1 minus v square by c square is equal to m0 square or this is equal to m square into you can cross multiply this c this c square that is c square minus v square by c square is equal to m zero square or this can be further simplified as m taking this m square into the brackets you will get m square c square minus m square v square is equal to taking this c square to the right you get m0 square c square call this as equation number four now derive dif or differentiate differentiate equation four now you have to differentiate the equation four. 
So what you get while differentiating equation 4? Always keep in mind that this m0, both the m0, comma, c are constants. Their value doesn't change. But both m and v are variables. So this can be written as derivative of m square c square minus derivative of m square v square is equal to derivative of m0 square c square. Clear. So since this c square is constant, this c square is constant, you can take that outside c square into derivative of m square is 2m but you have to write dm minus this you have to use the product rule that is m square into derivative of v square is 2v dv plus v square into derivative of m square is 2m dm which equal to on the right side both both the terms m0 square and c square are constant so the der derivative of constant is a zero this will be 2m c square dm minus 2m square v dv minus 2m v square dm is equal to 0. You can cancel this 2 every 2 and also one, one of the m's m here you this one of the m will be removed clear so the final expression will be so this can be written as c square dm minus there is only n, n m and v here so minus m v dv minus v square dm is equal to zero Taking all the negative ter terms to the right, you get c square dm is equal to mv dv plus v square dm. Call this as equation number 4. While you compare the equation 4 with 4, equation 4 with 3, you can see that both the right terms are equal, which means dw is equal to that is equation 3 is equal to equation 4. So dw is equal to c square dm. Clear. Call this as equation number 5. So this is your final equation dw is equal to c square dm. Now in order to get the total work you should integrate the equation 5. That is integral dw. Integral dw is equal to integral c square dm. You, you should also consider the limit. The lower limit is 0, the upper limit is the total work done w. Here the variable is m, so the initial mass is the rest mass and final mass is m. Integrating the dw will get w, then you have to write the lower limit here and the upper limit here is equal to you can take the c square outside since it is a constant now m0 to m dm this will be if you put the upper limit here w minus 0 is equal to c square integral of dm is m then the lower limit here the upper limit so this will be w is equal to c square into m minus m0 or or w is equal to mc square minus m0 c square if you take this m minus m0 c square to the left you will get w plus m0 c square equal to mc square this represent W plus M C M0 C square is the energy associated with the rest mass of the body. And the, this W represents the work done by the body. 
so its initial energy and the work done means the total energy associated with the body E. Therefore, E equal to mc square.